Now the cameras are here, the specs are out, we know all of the details for the most part. And you're probably thinking, what do you think, Ike? Did they live up to your expectations? Was it everything you wanted it to be? Or is Nikon washed and was it trash? Well, to be honest, to be perfectly honest with you, um, yes and no. Okay, but, but hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, okay? It was some good stuff and there was some bad stuff, okay? Uh, <laughs> they're good people on both sides, all right? Uh, so Nikon announced two cameras, right? The Z7 and the Z6. And the Z7 is the 24 megapixel, um, sorry, the Z7 is the 46 megapixel or 45.7 megapixel um, high resolution body. And the Z6 is the 24 megapixel um, lower resolution, but mostly, you know, supposed to be faster. Similar to A7R3 um, and A7 III. Depending on how you look at it, this can be the, either be a huge win or a letdown of sorts. For most of you guys, it's probably a letdown from what I've been seeing all over the web. But right now, their biggest competition is the Sony A7R III uh, and A7 III. And those cameras, you know, are amazing. I won't lie, I won't like, you know, sugarcoat anything. Night, uh, Sony did a, an amazing job with the Sony a7 III and a7 R3. Even the A9, but the A9 is out of most people's price range, so we usually talk about the a7 R and the a7 III. So yeah, matter of fact, this video is being recorded on the a7 III right now. Uh, I'm using my friend Stan's a7 III to record this video, so this is being shot on a Sony. And the last video that I shot on was a Sony a6500, so um, yeah, they're great for video. Now, if we break down the specs of the Z7, it actually competes very well with the Sony a7R III. Um, both cameras have over 40 megapixel. The Sony's 42, uh, the Nikon's 45. There's very little difference. Doesn't really make a difference at all. Uh, Sony has 399 phase detect AF points. Uh, Nikon has 493. Sony offers 68% autofocus coverage. The Nikon can do 90% autofocus coverage. Sony can do up to 10 frames per second. The Nikon can do up to 9 frames per second. Both of them have a silent shutter, which can suffer from rolling shutter, uh, depending on the situations. Um, both cameras have 3.6 million dot EVFs. The Sony can shoot 4K30. The Nikon can shoot 4K30. Sony does 120 uh, 1080p. Um, so does the Nikon. Um, both have reliable video autofocus. Finally, finally Nikon has reliable video autofocus. So Nikon can be taken a little more seriously with video. Uh, in fact, the Nikon can do 10-bit 422 4K out via HDMI, something that the Sonys can't do as of yet, at least until the A7S III comes out, then we'll see, that will probably change. Um, both have in-body image stabilization. So, I mean, you have to admit that those are pretty respectable numbers um, compared to Sony for Nikon's first, first full-frame camera. I mean, a lot of you probably didn't think Nikon could do any decent video at all, and then they came out with this, which is, you know, actually not bad for Nikon's first attempt. So, no, this isn't a Sony killer or anything at this point. Not as, as if anybody could kill Sony. I put that in the last title, but that was more clickbait. Nobody's really killing Sony. Sony has a loyal fan base, all right? Let's just keep it real. Now, with all that being said, of course, where people are bashing the camera or where you can kind of consider it a failure is that the Nikon only uses one card slot. The battery life is kind of questionable. Uh, there's no easy eye detect autofocus for people who need that. Um, and the buffer is pretty crappy, but I'll get into those things later. We already knew that the native lens selection would be trash because they switched to a new mount and that they would need to come out with an adapter that worked well with the F-mount lenses. Now they did that, so you can't say, oh, the adapter won't work as well because they've proven that the adapter is seamless. The adapter is seamless with uh, new generation F-mount lenses and it should work well with third party, you know, like Sigma and Tamron, as long as it doesn't use the screw drive autofocusing system. Now. Um, let's get into these issues that people seem to have with the camera and I can maybe break that down and offer like a different perspective and maybe be a little bit more reasonable, okay? All right, just hear me out, like I said. Okay, so if you've been living under a rock, then you would know the main thing and the biggest um, source of contention for a lot of people is the fact that the camera only uses one card slot. 
You know, there are a lot of working professional photographers like myself who shoot weddings and events and would like to have their cameras have two card slots for the option of redundancy and to help, you know, protect against uh, potential card failure and losing all of the images from an event and, you know, having a backup. So that part is fair. I, I get that. Nikon has been known to put dual card slots in their cameras for years. So I'm sure it's not anything that they forgot. They didn't like just say, oops, oh, we forgot to put in the second card slot. I think that that was a deliberate choice that they made for several reasons. Um, one, they still have a huge interest in DSLR cameras and DSLR sales. So I'm pretty sure that they wanted to protect their DSLR lineup to keep people invested who are working pros like myself. So if I needed a new camera and I needed dual card slots, my next option to stay within the Nikon line would be to go to a D850, uh, a D500, or a D5. And Nikon, I, I believe, wants to kind of protect that, that their interest in that you know specific area just because the camera only has one car slide doesn't mean that it can't be used for pro level work okay there are plenty of working pros out there that use one car slide big time fashion photographers uh, portrait editorial um, people who use medium format and phase one cameras Hasselblad's are shooting and working with one, me one memory card or they're shooting tethered to the computer which throws that you know um, argument out the window so and I know plenty of film shooters who use film and there's no redundancy in using film. You have what you have and that's, 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 that's a huge risk. Man, shooting film? Oh, and don't forget video shooters, okay? People who shoot video probably still use one car at slot as well. I believe, you know, video shooters. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people who shoot videos shoot to one car because they're shooting on an A6500. But I'm not gonna keep going in. Okay, you guys get the point. One car size sucks, but it's not the end of the world because you guys seem to be doing just fine. Those of you, you know who you are. Okay, so now the Z mount. Some of you Nikon users may or may not be frustrated about the fact that Nikon chose to go into a new mount system, but we knew this was coming. We saw the rumors, if you paid attention, we saw the reports. So it's only, it makes sense that they would switch to a new mount because the F mount is a little bit long in the tooth. It's been around for a really long time, uh, but the future of F mount can only go but so far because of t the technology that it's based off of. And they could have switched a while ago and decided to keep it back in the day and so that kept a lot of their loyal uh, people who had Nikon Legacy Glass to be able to carry it into the future. Um, but with this new system, um, I believe that it opens up more possibilities for what they can do with lens technology. Being that the flange distance is so small, it's like the smallest flange distance uh, out right now, so it makes Nikon system the most adaptable uh, system currently available. Nikon doesn't have like a partnership with like a huge lens manufacturer. Like Sony has Carl Zeiss to come up and fill the gaps for them. And Panasonic has Leica to come in and fill the gaps for them. Nikon has to, you know, make their lenses themselves. And so, of course, with this new mount, there's not going to be a lot of lenses out because Nikon's kind of doing everything themselves. Whereas like Sony has Carl Zeiss to come out with the 55 lenses like the 55 millimeter 1.8, the 135 f 2.8, uh, the 25 f 2 or 28 f 2, one of those lenses or maybe it's a 24. But you get what I'm saying. Now a lot of what I've also been seeing um, on these comment sections is who's gonna buy this camera? Who will buy this camera? Why would anybody buy a camera with one card slot? Uh, it doesn't have eye to focus, you know, Nikon's crazy for pricing this camera so high. Why would anybody want to buy this camera? You know, I got news for you, okay? The world is much bigger than this YouTube tech bubble that we get caught up in. It's much bigger than the Reddit message boards and the Petapixel comment section that we seem to go back and forth in, okay? There's way more people out here who could have it used for this camera. For example, my wife, who also shoots photos, uh, she could care less about a 10K, or sorry, 4K 60P in internal 422 bit. She doesn't care about any of that stuff. What she might care about is a smaller, lighter weight camera that already uses her lenses that she has already in her bag. 
And the fact that it has an EVF might be a convenience for her because it's new technology for her. Meanwhile, we've been in this sphere for a long time. People like her may not know about what's out there. And so being introduced to something that she can already adapt her current equipment with that has all of these new technologies and features would be great for somebody like her. And there's a lot of people out here in, in the same situation. Early a few months back, I went on a trip to Thailand, right? And so I took my G85 and I took my Nikon D750. Now I took my G85 because I wanted to vlog my trip. I wanted to be a, a travel vlogger and vlog my trip in 4K and I needed something like good to vlog my trip. So, you know, I brought my Panasonic G85 and it had a flip around screen. So I brought that and it had decent autofocus for what it can do. But at the same time, I wanted to be able to take some really nice pictures because this is kind of a once in a lifetime trip for me. Like it's my first time out going this far, you know, across seas. And so I'm in Thailand. I'm like, oh, I might want to take some pictures that I can take back to create screen servers or whatever. And so I wanted to be able to use the best possible uh, quality camera that I had, which which also, you know, worked for size, which is my Nikon D750. So I took my G85 to vlog and I took my D750 to take images with. It would have been nice if I had a Nikon Z6 at the time to take because I could have used my Z6 to vlog my trip in 4K or in 1080p with slow motion as well as I would have had a camera to take all of the images that I needed to take. Like that would have been perfect for me in that situation having the Z6. An all-in-one camera for that trip plus would have made my bag lighter because I wouldn't have to carry around two cameras. I could have just had this camera on the tripod and if I wanted to take a picture I could turn around and take images. So just think about scenarios like that for people like myself who already own Nikon gear or like Nikon gear and you know just want to go on vacation. You know, when I go to Canada or Arizona or California and I just want to take something that I already have that can work, this these type of things work well in those situations. Also about the who's gonna buy it argument, well for years, Sony only had one card slot and they had crappy battery, but that didn't stop them from selling a whole lot of cameras as well. You had people who had, you know, nice 5D Mark IVs. We're trading in their 5D Mark IVs for a Sony uh, A7R II or in 5D Mark III's. Now these are cameras that had really good battery life, dual card slots, decent autofocus, and great picture quality. You know, people gave up all of that for a camera with one card slot, um, <clears throat> you know, a, a nice EVF and crappy battery. So the fact that people did that just up until last year, the Sony A9 and A7R3 just came out last year, guys. Don't forget, it's just, it has, Sony hasn't had dual card slots forever. They've only had it for maybe a year at the best. So um, this whole argument about like how people won't buy it when, People brought Sony's, they traded in their, you know, D750s with dual card slots for Sony's with one card slot and Sony A6500s. That's that's crazy because Sony users have been using that for years. And again, some of you watching this video probably have an A7R2 in your bag. So there you go. Now I, like most of you, have been watching the first impression videos roll through and I've been seeing people praise the camera and criticize the camera and trust me I get it the criticisms about the cameras are fair you know the one card slot uh, although I can make arguments for it at the same time for some people it can suck and really be a deal breaker that's cool I get that the fact that the battery life is pretty pretty you know shady it's fair I get that that's fine but this whole notion of, oh, if the camera doesn't have eye autofocus in 4K60, that means the camera's trash is nonsense. Like, I feel like we need to get out of this whole, if it doesn't have the latest and greatest tech, then it's garbage and nobody will want it and nobody will want to use it. That's, that's just crazy to me that like, you have to have all of this to take a great picture or make a great video when everybody tells you it's not really about the gear, it's about, the person using the gear. And that's valid to a point. You know, of course you want to have gear that won't hold you back from creating what you want to create, but that depends on what you create. If you're somebody who's taking fine art portraiture, uh, then having 20 frames per second might not mean much to you. But if you are a sports shooter, then 20 frames per second and a super fast butter might be what you need. So really we have to take into account 
who people are, what kind of art they create individually and what works for them. And maybe what may not work for you might not necessarily be the case for everybody. You know, some of us have individual thoughts and like to create our own things and we don't want to be like everybody else and use the same thing that everybody else is using. I mean, let's just be real. A lot of you who switched, you know, for these game changing features are still creating the same kind of pictures that you created before you switched. You know, 20 frames per second isn't going to make you a better photographer. Um, eye auto focus isn't going to make you a better photographer, you know, just because you have the eye and sharp focus, that's great, but your camera is still trash if your composition is weak and your lighting is off. So those things matter more than what kind of feature a camera has. I just wanted to give my opinions and try to be a voice of reason uh, against all of the hate train and, and the criticism that the Nikon system has been receiving so far. You know, if you were, you know, a Nikon user and you were waiting for Nikon to come out with the mirrorless with dual camera slots and, you know, great battery life and something to kill Sony, this wasn't it. I'm sorry, but this is not going to kill Sony uh, anytime soon, if ever, in, in my opinion. Um, if you're somebody who needs to buy a mirrorless camera today and you rely on dual memory card slots and great battery life, then probably Sony's your best option currently right now. Either that or wait to see what Canon has to offer or keep your DSLR if it works fine and just, you know, wait it out and see if Nikon fixes it in the future. But, you know, to be honest with you, if you've been waiting this long and this is what they have to offer, you either put up or shut up at this point. So anyways, uh, let me know your thoughts below. What do you think? Like, you know, will you be getting one regardless? Did my reasons help give you like a different aspect or a different perspective on the Nikon system? Is it still trash regardless and you're like, screw Nikon? Um, you know, I, I doubt that, you know, Nikon would, anybody would leave from Sony to Nikon. Like, that's kind of stupid to me at this point. Like, Sony's system, like I said, is really good. So there was no point for people to try to switch over from Sony to Nikon. But again, <clears throat> let me know your thoughts below. This is getting a little long with it. All right. Peace out, people. Thanks.